So I'm gonna show you some of my most viral short form tips and tricks videos. So I posted this one and it went crazy. So this is an example of a tip that is actually hidden in plain sight. There's tons of them and tons of tools. So have you ever been working on a project where your machine screw that you're using is too long? So you have to go to the store, you find the right length, yada, yada, yada. Well, on electrical pliers, there are built-in machine screw cutters. It will actually thread through, you'll cut it, and when you take the screw back out, it actually re-threads the screw, put it right in place, hidden in plain sight. So a lot of people do not know that before I started my journey on YouTube, I was actually creating short form videos. So this all started during COVID. A lot of people were at home playing on their phones. So I wanted to be able to teach people that way. I didn't know anything about YouTube, so short form was the way to go. But my goal for doing this was to teach people while they were sitting at home. Maybe they could learn a new skill while sitting at home. Maybe they could get interested in woodworking while sitting at home. Then it worked. People loved it. So I started off with tips and tricks and I had several of these videos go viral. Tons and tons, millions and millions and millions of views. Very short. That's the way that the short form game goes. You have to be able to get your point across very quickly in a very, very short amount of time. So this video actually did awesome. Anything that has to do with the miter saw and the miter saw is actually packed with tips and tricks depending on what types that you have. This is a compound dual bevel miter saw so it actually has the tabs that are preset. These are preset for crown molding and also for baseboard. So the 22 and a half is for baseboard, the 33.9 is going to be for crown molding. You just put these tabs down and there will be a stop there and will actually stop you exactly on your 33.9 or your 22.5 whichever one that you decide to use. Super handy add-on and I'm sure by now almost every saw out there has. So this one's just about brad nails, the proper way to install a brad nail. There actually is a proper way. If you look at the end of the brad nail, you actually see that it comes to a tip. That tip will determine which direction that that nail will go if it hits a knot or a hard spot. We've all had nails shoot out the sides and you know almost go into our fingers. Well, if you aim it properly, the nail will actually go back into the wood instead of blowing out the side. I made three different videos on how to cut crown molding. Crown molding is everyone's nemesis. So what I found out was with every video there were people out there that completely told me that I was wrong that real carpenters did not cut crown this way so I had to end up making three separate videos with three different ways that you can actually cut crown molding to me there really is no wrong way to cut crown molding it's whatever your mind can wrap around and whatever you can do best but for this one is using the nesting method this is probably the most common method this is just where we nest the piece of crown up against the fence upside down and what I've done is just taken duct tape put it onto my fence. That way, whenever I get my first piece of crown nested, and I make sure it's nested all the way against the back, I can just draw a line onto my duct tape. That way, if I'm doing several pieces, I can go straight back. We know that for this spring angle of this crown, this is where this needs to be cut. Perfect for uh, repetitive cuts. And in the end of this video, I actually show the installation of the crown of one of the concealment shelves. That's actually a big question that I've been getting is, how do you cut the crown for that? Well, this is it. So this one, I was just wanting to make some bar clamp pads. I did not want to go out and buy levelers, anything like that. It had some old school pipe clamps. Um, so old foam from our previous builds and basically just heated up my bar clamp piping and made the indention into the foam. I keep these laying around, super handy for squaring up your work surface, things like that. Super easy to make and made out of scrap. So this one is going to be about making sure that your level is actually level. If we drop our levels, we need to test them, make sure that they're still actually level. So this is a method that you can actually do that with just a shim. Okay, so when we're testing this, we will not always be on a perfectly level surface. And you can't test it if you're trying to test your level. So the shim will actually level the level with itself. You make your mark, flip it over, and if it's still perfectly level and lines up with that mark, your level's good to go. Okay, so now this one went crazy. I'm not for sure why, but this is just an abrasive cleaning stick. I use a lot of high resin wood, like pine, things like that. It will clog up your sandpaper. Just showing a tip on how to actually remove that instead of tossing sandpaper over and over and over. It's too expensive to do that. You can actually use an old shoe to do this, but they do sell these abrasive sticks that are awesome and they last forever. So probably one of my most viral tool tip videos was actually on how to cut crown molding flat. A lot of people do not realize that you can actually cut crown flat. You do not have to flip it upside down, cut it backwards, all of that stuff. Have you ever wondered what the little numbers were that were off? Like the 33.9 on your saw. If you have a compound miter saw, you can cut crown molding flat. 
So if you're cutting crown molding flat, you will just bevel your saw to 33.9 degrees. This is on a compound miter saw. The number's are already there. And you'll actually turn your miter to 31.6. Again, this is already on the plate, stamped out 31.6. That is why it is on there. The other numbers that you on your plates have uses too, like the 22.5, that's for baseboard. There's all kinds of information on these saws. We just take the time to go through our little books and read them. It is a little sketch cutting some of these uh, compound miters if you're not used to it, but it's another method to achieve the same goal. So one of my favorite ones, the ones about the speed squares. Speed squares are one of the handiest tools that you can have in your tool bag. So many different uses that people do not even know about. Woodworkers assume that speed squares are for framing. That is not the case. And this video is one of many. I show several different things that you can do with these. So of course you can find your angles. If you're looking for a certain degree and you know how to use the pivot points, super easy to find that angle. Little tips about what the cutouts are for, like this diamond. This diamond is exactly three and a half inches from the end. Put a pencil mark in there, that is a stud. A stud is three and a half inches wide. And just the basic measurements of this thing, you know, the inch base, it all comes into play for quick measurements. So it's not just for 45s and 90s and making sure that everything is square. There's a ton of other items. The teeth and the Swansons, these are all set up to actually hold the tip of your pencil for making these marks straight lines down your boards. Handiest tool in the bag. Then of course you can always cope crown, but this one is actually showing another way to use the nesting method using crown stops. A lot of different companies sell these. These are actually pretty cool. This is the way that I would go if your saw is designed to accept these. They're only about 20 bucks, maybe even cheaper than that. I'll link everything in the bio. I would recommend if your saw is actually set up for this. But a lot of saws actually come with the bolt hole pre-drilled in that to accept these crown stops. Make sure that your crown is nested against the fence and lock them in. You're ready for repeatable cuts. Now this one was probably one of my first viral videos that I ever had. This was just an old school way, a way that I would always join my wood before I could afford a joiner. It works perfect. It takes a little time, but it works perfect. So in this video, I'm just showing how I'm taking this gap out of this wood by using end blocks. I'm just gonna screw them onto the end of the wood. I don't know why I put that clamp on there because you don't actually even need the clamp, but you actually want to see the gap. You want to see the bow, and that is what we're going to be ripping out on the table saw. Remember, most blades, unless you have a thin kerf blade, has around an eighth of an inch kerf, so it's going to take that bow out. For some reason, if one pass does not do it, you can actually undo the board on one side, push them back together, screw it back in, and take the rest out. But make sure that this is not your final work piece because of the ends, the screw holes in the ends. You need to leave enough room just to slice those off. But this is a perfect way for beginners to actually join wood without spending all the money on a joiner. Throughout the different platforms there were millions of views on this one so obviously people liked it. So this one everyone has seen this technique, the Japanese technique of wood burning. It was actually used for wood preservation before they had treated material, things like that, but makes for a super cool look. Since everyone was doing this I wanted to teach a different way to use it. You can actually color stain this. Then I actually did a video on how to make your own color stains. You can actually come up with some really creative products using this method been kind of beat to death now, but with simply adding a little bit of color to it, you can make all kinds of neat things. So for this one we actually talked about in one of our other videos, you actually see me use this in a couple of my build videos, I still use it. It's an awesome hack, it's an awesome trick. You can use any of these, any type of shelf bracket, clamp them to your work surface and it makes it's a great way to work the edges of your material to keep them balanced. I'm definitely keeping this one in my top 10. Okay, so for this one, I'm basically just taking some scrap wood and I'm making standoffs for painting or staining or whatever you would like to do. Yes, they sell these little cheap standoffs like this. They're not very expensive. But the ones that we are making in this video, these are heavy duty. I find that they have a lot more balance. They don't want to tip over near as much. And they're made out of scrap wood. I mean, they're super cheap to make and why not? I keep a box of these laying around as standoffs. That way I can work one piece of material and then get back to uh, working the other side without having to wait for it to dry. Again, you can buy these things, but why buy them when you have everything in your shop to make them right now for free? Another one is another miter saw tip. A lot of people do not know that they actually have a depth stop. I used them in one of my last videos on the concealment table. This depth stop is actually made for only allowing the saw to cut to a certain depth. Super handy if you're going to be cutting out notched ends or making half lap joints. You can just set the saw, 
go to town. You need the deepest part of the blade set to the depth that you're looking for. So sometimes you need to have a space behind that to bring the wood out. That way the deepest part of your blade actually goes down to the depth that you have set. And this last one that I'm going to show you, these are the types of videos that people love on short form channels. Yeah. So if you want to pick up some of these screws, the next time that you see a rainbow, just follow it all the way to the very end. When you get there, there's going to be a leprechaun and this big old pot of, not gold, but these screws. So good luck with that. Until next time, see ya.